Guys, 4.53 billion years ago, Earth was in a rough spot. It had recently been gouged deeply by Thea and was bleeding molten rock across the sky. The molten rock and dust darkened the sky and showers of molten droplets pelted down onto the hellish red surface. But now, now that Thea crashed into Earth, Earth's last major collision was over and from now on only smaller asteroids would crash in and the Earth's surface, probably starting with the polar regions, because in the polar regions there's less sunlight and the moon's tidal effects are less, in those polar regions, Earth's surface began to harden. The first crust of Earth lasted very shortly because the peridotite, which is the rock type that the first crust was made out of, was denser than the magma that held it. So some peridotite would freeze out on the surface, but it would buckle under the surface and make its way down, falling through the less dense magma beneath it. As it fell, the easier to melt parts of the peridotite rocks melted, and the resulting magma from this partial melting was lighter than peridotite, so it started making its way up. When the partial melt froze out, it formed the first sustainable crust of Earth, basalt, and basalt still makes up the crust underneath all the continents and is what the ocean floor is made out of. Now let's take a closer look at the process of making our first sustainable crust. 4.53 billion years ago, Earth is completely molten. And there are four things that are working to keep Earth molten. One, asteroids are still crashing onto our surface. Two, mile-high equatorial tides of molten rock are being induced by the very close by 15,000 mile away moon and are circling the globe. Three, the internal heat from differentiation and radioactivity that we've met a couple of times already. And four, there's likely a major greenhouse effect at the surface of Earth due to some of the gases that are being released by all the volcanic activity, which is just a constant on the surface of Earth as it's beginning to freeze out, gases such as carbon dioxide. So these four forces are working against the cooling, but the cooling is happening inexorably. There's nothing that you could do to stop it. Space is cold, Earth is hot. These four sources continued to fight, but they began to lose as the first crust began to form. The heat hasn't yet lost entirely, which is why we have a magnetic field and moving tectonic plates. So as the molten surface begins to cool, it first begins to crystallize a mineral at just under 1900 degrees, and that's when the first minerals of forsterite freeze out. Forsterite's atomic composition is two magnesium atoms, one silicon atom, and four oxygen atoms. To classify it, the magnesium and silicon make it a magnesium silicate mineral, and it belongs to the larger olivine group of minerals. This forsterite crystal is composed of a higher ratio of magnesium and silicon than the bulk magma from which it's freezing out, so this increases the ratio of the other elements that are around, the calcium, the aluminum, and the iron, in the remaining molten mixture. And just a note to get a better sense of the bulk composition of all this magma, more than 97% of all the atoms in the mantle and the crust today are oxygen, iron, magnesium, silicon, and then much smaller amounts of aluminum, calcium, and nickel. And the remaining less than 3% are of many other elements. And of those seven that I mentioned, oxygen leads the parade. Let's return back to that mineral forsterite. So as this magnesium silicate olivine freezes out, it grows bigger and bigger, up to the size of a grape, and once it reaches about that size, it begins to sink. As it falls, it grows bigger and bigger, and the bigger it grows, the faster it sinks as it makes its way to the bottom of the magma chamber. And it's going to come to comprise the overwhelming majority of the first rock type, dunite, at the bottom of these magma chambers. The forsterite continued to freeze out and fall, and earth continued to cool. And then another mineral began freezing out, enstatite. This pyroxene mingled together with the olivine forsterite, and they came together to form the rock type peridotite, forming different forms of peridotite at different depths up to 80 kilometers down. But let's move back to the surface for a moment and look at the forsterite and enstatite that are mingling there. Over there, they're mingling and forming the first crust of Earth, the peridotite crust. The peridotite would have grown a thin layer where it grew, but then it would crack and it would buckle and it would sink into the magma beneath because it's heavier than the magma from which it's forming. So no significant amount could ever be built up on the surface without sinking. But it's from this fall of peridotite that the first sustainable crust is born. As the peridotite falls, it displaces the magma beneath which cools and forms more peridotite, which falls and displaces the magma beneath, and so on it goes. And as the peridotite sinks lower into the hotter molten rock, it partially melts, 
and the resulting partial melt of the peridotite is much lower in density than the peridotite from which it's melting. So because of that, insofar as it could, this partial melt makes its way up toward the surface. This melt is significantly richer in calcium and aluminum. It has slightly more iron and silicon and much less magnesium than the peridotite that birthed it. The peridotite rock continues to form and sink until it came to reach about 400 kilometers deep into Earth. But the partial melt of peridotite was on a journey of its own upwards. Some of the lighter molten rock that melted off of the peridotite would breach the surface and come pouring out as basaltic lava and that would come to make the first sustained black crust of Earth and remains the majority of the crust to this day. But most of the basalt that melted from this peridotite remained underground and as we move kilometers down this melt takes the form of gabbro which is chemically identical to basalt but is a different rock type resulting from the higher pressures that it's forming under. The crust builds up around the planet and slowly turns our planet completely black which is where we leave it. Like the video, subscribe, support me on Liberia Pay, link in the description. Bye!